Um, so moving on to a different topic, I, I wanted to give us a chance to touch on the recent lawsuit that was filed by the ABA in December against the U.S. Department of Education, and it was regarding the Public Service um, Loan Forgiveness Program. Um, as a recent law school graduate myself, I know there are likely there's likely only a small portion of law students that weren't aware of the program because it was something that law students um, that were interested in seeking to pursue a public service job were aware of and, and knew the options that it provided by going to law school. Um, so as the ABA president, um, what advice would you give to both current students and recent graduates that may have been planning on taking advantage of the benefits of this program um, and the benefits that it provides to law students? Um, what, what would you advice would you share? Why don't we start, if I can go back to why we filed the lawsuit. Certainly. So, at, for those of you who don't know the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, it was signed by President Bush II in 2007. And what it said was that if you worked in a public service job for 10 years and paid 10% of your income toward your loans, that after 10 years, your remaining loan balance would be forgiven. Now, as you know, law school is not necessarily cheap. In fact, it's very expensive. And some people in some of the public service jobs actually saw their loan balances grow. And starting sometime in the spring of last year, lawyers who worked at the American Bar Association started getting letters, and even though from the Department of Education, and even though year after year they were getting letters from the Department of Education telling them that they were in a qualifying job, that they had paid so many months toward their 10 years and that they had so many months to go before their loan would be forgiven, that they were getting letters that said, remember what we told you all those years? We're taking it back. Retroactive, retroactive. It was really very, very upsetting. And these are people who relied on these letters year after year and continued to work in public service in reliance on those letters. I was shocked. Representatives of the ABA staff leadership met with representatives of the Department of Education. That didn't work. As ABA president and the president-elect, the executive director of the ABA, we went to meet with uh, a very leading official at the Department of Education in September. We were told that we would have a response in, in about 30 days. We received our response on December 1, and there was no relief. So on December 20th, with pro bono assistance from the law firm of Ropes and Gray, the ABA and four individuals filed suit against the Department of Education. These people were betrayed and we're going to work hard to help them. So we have lawyers that work at the ABA, we have lawyers that work at the American Immigration Lawyers Association, paralyzed Vietnam veterans. Uh, there are a variety of lawyers out there. And, and by the way, public service loan forgiveness is not limited to lawyers. So there could be social workers and teachers and others. We don't know who's gotten these letters. Uh, somebody said, well, why didn't you do a Freedom of Information Act request? And in fact, one of the lawyers did a Freedom of Information Act request and got back 198 blank redacted pages. So we really do not know what was behind the decision, but we intend to fight for public service loan forgiveness. The ABA had a grassroots campaign that a lot of the law students were involved in, and I'm sure that you can put the uh, links to both the, the press release about the lawsuit, to you can see copies of the lawsuit and the attachments, and you'll see these letters as members of the press did and wrote about, that they saw letters that uh, said, you qualified and then now you don't. So if you would add all of that, then everybody watching this can see. So if I were a law student now, to answer your specific question, if I were a law student now and I was considering a career in public service, well, I certainly hope that you do, but I do want you to follow this lawsuit very carefully so that you will understand whether you can take advantage of public service loan forgiveness. There are other programs besides public service loan forgiveness that perhaps you could consider as well, but Unfortunately, until this lawsuit is resolved, we can't tell anyone that they can for sure 
rely on public service loan forgiveness. Thank you so much for that explanation and then also the advice. Um, I will be sure, as you mentioned, to put the links down below. And then also, um, does the ABA have a website? Because I, I remember specifically back when we were doing on the um, ABA, the Twitter account was doing all these um, campaigns trying to raise, aware, raise awareness of what was going on. And so in addition to the links to actually read the letter, um, are there action points that you can recommend, whether it's contacting representatives or anything like that, that, that current law students or recent grads can do to take part in making an effect and joining the ABA in this fight? So in the last Congress, when zeroing out public service loan forgiveness was proposed, we did start a grassroots campaign and young lawyers and law students, we had the hashtag loan, the number four and givenness and, and I wore my badge proudly. Uh, we had little buttons that said save uh, loan forgiveness with the hashtag on it. But right now we're in litigation. So uh, it would be, it, it, we really wouldn't have a, a, a campaign like that. Now if Congress again talks about uh, zeroing out public service loan forgiveness, then we'll be back with that grassroots campaign. Great. Thank you so much for that overview. And again, thank you for the insights and sharing what's going on.